So good morning and welcome to our reflection for Monday in Holy Week. Our reading is from John chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave him a dinner and Martha served and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard and anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii? and some money given to the poor. He said this, not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put in it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor with you but you do not always have me. I've been reading a book by a person called Roald R Watson. Um, he's he's an, or, an amateur organist and he's written about his uh, journey playing the organ in several churches. And the book is called A Thousand Blended Notes. And towards the end of the book, this is what he writes. As a traveller, I have learned that there are two types of journey. There are journeys which are made as means of getting to one's destination as quickly as possible, and others where the journey is part of the overall experience with pleasure and interest along the way, and perhaps a little turbulence. Such has been my musical journey. As I said, those closing words written by the organist Roald Watson in his book, A Thousand Blended Notes, are appropriate for today's reflection. It's on the theme of journeying. All of us, it goes without saying, are at some stage in our life journeys, including our faith journeying. My days at the moment are the opposite of Watson's. As he recalled his life thus far, he had, he said, a little turbulence, <clears throat> whereas you and I live in the upheaval of the coronavirus, which is sending waves of uncertainty, fear and isolation worldwide. Amazing community support is blossoming together with an appreciation of those in the caring professions. Some people find themselves at this time drawing closer to God, but I found that my spiritual journey is challenging. The structural framework of regular work, weekly worship in church with others is no longer there, and nor are the Lent groups and the Holy Week activities which were planned. Yes, it's true, they might be available online, but it's not the same. The personal presence of others is missing, and I am at a spiritual low. Yet this reading from John's Gospel encourages, encourages me to keep going and remain faithful to my baptismal calling and my promise to follow faithfully. Jesus' short life of 30 or so years is drawing in this passage to a close. He's had the nurture of Mary and Joseph, the companionship of friends and disciples, the enjoyment of hospitality in the homes of rich and poor, and above all, the God-given purpose of touching lives with God's healing and love. And the, today's verses describe a beautiful gift being given to Jesus. He is in Mary, Martha and Lazarus's home, the Lazarus who died and was raised to life by Jesus. 
they're giving him hospitality and have prepared an evening meal in his honour. His visit is a break in what he knows will be his last journey to Jerusalem, where he will experience the most turbulent time yet. It's just before the Passover feast. During the meal, Mary enters the room with her gift. Something tells her not to delay. Now is the time to show her gratefulness, her respect and devotion to Jesus. And she freely, extravagantly pours the fragrant oil upon Jesus' feet. Maybe she poured it on his head too. She unpins her hair quite against normal protocol and wipes his feet. Her actions show humility and devotion to him, but also it's an anointing for his forthcoming burial. Oil has a rich biblical symbolism. It can be for the anointing of being set aside for a specific task. It can be used for healing, for cleansing and blessing. The sign of the cross is often made in oil on our foreheads at our baptism and our confirmation. When we promise to remain faithful to Christ all the days of our life, Christ remained faithful to his calling. And so too, I am encouraged to remain faithful to following him in the journeying which lies before me. May God bless you on your journeys. Lord our God, grant us the faith to know you and love you. May we be found by you on the way of the cross, which is the way to glory. Amen. <laughs>